what happens chemically to our bodies when we get drunk. So first of all, even if it may seem obvious, it should be specified that the cause of intoxication is the alcohol contained in this type of drink. And even though there are actually different types of alcohol, when we talk about the one present in beverages, we are referring to only one type, ethyl alcohol or simply ethanol. This is the only one that can be consumed by humans and in fact it's the one that's in our Saturday night cocktails. However, do not think that the habit of having a drink on the weekend is a recent invention. It is estimated that prehistoric populations were already utilizing alcoholic beverages derived from fruit and that the Egyptians, between one pyramid and another, also manufactured wine and beer. They adored these beverages so greatly that they commemorated the festival of inebriation annually in tribute to the deity Hathor. But let's see in detail how it works, how this notorious drunkenness phenomenon occurs. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers. We are Italians. It was manually translated into English, but dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. We are sitting comfortably at the bar with our friends, enjoying some snacks and being served our icy cocktail. Okay, everything begins the moment alcohol comes into contact with our mouth. Already from the first sip, a small part of the ethanol is absorbed directly by the mucous membranes of our tongue, mouth and esophagus, ending up directly in our blood. Upon entering the stomach, an additional 20% of ethanol is absorbed into the bloodstream. All the rest, on the other hand, is sent directly to the liver so it can be broken down and transformed through what is known as the process of metabolism. Here, in fact, a team of enzymes, which are proteins capable of accelerating chemical reactions, is tasked with transforming ethanol into acetaldehyde. Be careful with this substance because in addition to being very harmful to our body, it is also the cause of the dreaded hangover symptoms. As it's highly toxic, a new team of enzymes immediately comes to the rescue to transform it into a new chemical substance called acetate. The problem, however, arises when we drink too much because the amount of acetaldehyde that is formed is so large that the liver is no longer able to metabolize it all and a good portion of it is therefore released back into the blood. I'll give you a practical example. If I, for instance, were to drink 125 milliliters of wine with 12 grams of ethanol, it would take me about one and a half hours to metabolize it. If I increased the dosage and drank 10 glasses of wine, it would take over 10 hours to metabolize 120 grams of ethanol. However, my liver would not be able to function efficiently for the entire duration and that is how a portion of the alcohol would re-enter my bloodstream, circulating throughout my body and resulting in intoxication. At this stage, alcohol moves through the highways, if they can be called that, of the circulatory system, ready to make us intoxicated. The first effect we perceive is vasodilation. What does that mean? Simply put, our blood vessels, including our veins, arteries and capillaries, expand, thereby enhancing the flow of blood. This leads to the loss of heat, which provides us with the typical sensation of warmth that is experienced due to intoxication. So is it true that alcohol warms us up? Absolutely not at all. On the contrary, it is true that it gives us a feeling of warmth, but this same heat dispersion also causes a decrease in our body temperature and, in extreme cases, actually increases the risk of hypothermia. So it's very dangerous. Furthermore, ethanol also decreases the production of vasopressin, which is a hormone responsible for helping the kidneys regulate the amount of fluid in the body. In essence, it understands when we to go to the bathroom and when we don't. By decreasing vasopressin, the kidneys lose their ability to absorb water, causing all fluids, even the beneficial ones, to be expelled through urine. And that is why every time we drink too much beer, for example, we have to run to the bathroom every five minutes. However, alcohol doesn't just stop at the blood vessels, it keeps traveling to the heart and from there it's pumped to the rest of the body. Once it reaches the lungs, it is partially expelled through breathing, causing the bad breath that is typical of a big drinking session. Do you know what I'm talking about? Here, finally, the alcohol also reaches the brain, making us disoriented, uninhibited and senselessly cheerful. However, it must first conquer the obstacle that shields it, the blood-brain barrier. Imagine it as a filter, a sieve with such a tight mesh that it prevents substances that could harm our brain from reaching it. And this filter is so effective that brain infections are actually quite rare, 
because viruses and bacteria cannot enter the brain, they are promptly blocked. However, due to its capacity to mix and blend with the fats of the barrier, alcohol is able to pass through the mesh of the sieve and reach our brain directly. At this point, there's nothing to be done. Alcohol is ready to act on the release or reabsorption of what we call neurotransmitters, particularly acetylcholine, dopamine, gamma aminobutyric acid, and glutamate. These neurotransmitters, these chemical substances, are none other than messenger molecules, we can call them that, which send information between the neurons in the brain, thus regulating the flow of our thoughts. As a result, when alcohol acts on these neurotransmitters, the flow of information, and therefore our thoughts, slows down and only the strongest signals are taken into consideration by the brain. Sensations are therefore perceived less, our tension decreases, we feel more euphoric and even our memory worsens. In fact, the next day we might not remember a great deal of what took place. By decreasing brain activity, thoughts become clearer, certainly less complex, but much clearer, more lucid. That's why when drunk, people may be inclined to repeat the same simple phrases over and over again, convinced that they are pearls of wisdom which should be recorded for posterity. In the evening, while we're drinking, we felt happy and carefree, but the morning after we pay a high price for it. Nausea, headaches, stomach aches, fatigue, in short, a hangover. The main cause of all this is dehydration. Do you remember vasopressin, the hormone that regulates the absorption of fluids in our body? Very well, as its production has significantly decreased, our body is presently dehydrated. In order to compensate for this deficiency, vital organs start extracting fluids from wherever they can, including the brain, indeed, the cerebral tissue. The fluids that separate the brain from the skull shrink and diminish resulting in the excruciating headache that is typical and characteristic of a hangover. However, the effects we experience the day after are not the only negative consequences alcohol has on our body. In fact, the long-term effects are the most worrying. Excessive consumption of alcohol can indeed cause numerous liver diseases, diabetes, strokes, gastrointestinal disorders, and can even lead to neuronal apoptosis, which is essentially the death of neurons. In short, Alcoholic drinks have been with humans for millenniums and have been present at the most significant meals in recent history. They witnessed pyramids being built, as mentioned, they saw America discovered and were present during Jesus' Last Supper. Certainly, they are a part of our history and if consumed in small quantities, they can pleasantly accompany our meals in a convivial manner. However, we would like to once again renew the invitation not to overdo it and obviously to drink responsibly. At least now when you pour that extra glass, you will know scientifically what is happening in your body. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more from Geopop, where science meets everyday life. See you next time. Alla prossima.